Hi folks, today I'm going to talk about making lanyards. Now, lanyards are fairly popular because they allow you to put your pass somewhere where it's easy to get to and if it's something that needs to be displayed, uh, like uh, an admittance uh, membership or some kind of uh, campus pass, then obviously having it on a lanyard is, is much easier than keeping the pocket and have to keep taking it out. Uh, in some places, in fact, you need to display your ID at all time. Uh, if you don't have a clip-on uh, pass, then a uh, lanyard is probably the second best what thing, really. Before we start, a couple of things about legality of selling lanyards. So I've uh, been selling lanyards at Comic Cons for a little while, uh, making them and selling them, and uh, only recently I've discovered some interesting things about the legality of selling some of my uh, lanyards. In fact, I've had to stop selling some of my lanyards because I've discovered that, well, I'd be basically breaking copyright if I did. And the reason for this uh, is probably as much as anything down to the packaging and the selling of the, the ribbon. So here I've got uh, a couple of ribbons here from uh, these are from Hobbycraft, which is a UK craft shop. And if you look on the back, it says here, uh, ribbon for craft use only. Uh, well, I made the obvious assumption that craft use, making a lanyard or, or finishing off a, you know, a skirt or uh, maybe a pff, anything, really. <laughs> uh, let's say a pencil case uh, using this uh, would be a legal yeah, thing to do and if I use some of this material in one of my uh, you know, arts or crafts projects that I would be able to sell that on with no problem. Uh, however, uh, this one's from 2013. Uh, this one from also from Hobbycraft, from, uh, this one's from 2014, uh, goes on to say that this product is intended solely for non-commercial home use. So, Basically, you can't use it in anything and sell it. To me, uh, for craft use only and for solely uh, commer non-commercial home use, that's sort of limit it really to just making a lanyard for myself or putting say, but I suppose if it's non-commercial uh, home use, I could make a pencil case for someone with a bit of this on it and, and give it to them uh, as long as I didn't sell it so yeah uh, the it is a strange line between uh, buying material and using it uh, licensed material uh, and using it and uh, buying licensed material and reselling it uh, personally I think if I turn this into a, a, a lanyard I'm adding value and I've done the work and I've paid for the material, uh, why can't I sell it? However, that's not the way Disney look at it. So uh, in future, uh, I will have to uh, either buy pre-licensed uh, pre lanyards and, and, and sell them or stay away from these sort of products. Now, saying that, that's not all doom gloom because you can stay away from those sort of products. You can uh, use ribbon. Uh, any sort of ribbon you want really you can use uh, pre-printed ones where there isn't that restriction on the license you can produce your own ribbons of course uh, you can uh, color them in on plain you can embroider them you can you can you could make one out of crochet you could make one out of uh, uh, of knitted uh, fact you could knit your own uh, in fact it, here's a Here's one where it's two bits of material just sewn together just to make one of the straps. So, yeah, it, you have to keep an eye uh, open uh, when you buy pre-printed materials to make sure that you wouldn't be uh, breaking any any rules. If it's for your own personal use, go to town, whatever you want. Uh, however, if you're going to uh, sell these, then make sure that you buy uh, material which you have a license to, to sell it basically. Right, so let's talk lanyards. What are lanyards? Well, lanyards are a material of some description. They're a 
end clip which goes down the front and that has some sort of clasp on it this one has what they call a lobster claw clasp and that's to, to put your uh, your ID into and at the back you have a clip and then this is a safety clip it takes a little bit of pressure to break but it will break a lot before your neck breaks if you were to I don't know fall down and catch your lanyard on a, on a, a door handle or something uh, so these are I wouldn't sell one without one of these put it this way uh, it's too dangerous uh, there are a lot of people who still uh, use lanyards I've been to a, a couple of conventions where people have had lanyards with no safety clip on I don't know where they get them uh, but I wouldn't uh, advise you to buy any safe any any lanyard that does not have some sort of uh, safety clip on it okay what sort of tools do we need to make it well obviously we need a pair of scissors uh, or a guillotine or a craft knife or something to, to cut the material uh, we need uh, if again it depends on the material if it's a material that frays you may need to seal it now that could be sealed I'm I, this is I'm gonna seal this with um, uh, just using a lighter basically to melt the ends but you could use uh, fray stop or glue uh, or even just do a double stitch uh, just basically fold it over and put a stitch in uh, so that the frayed edge never comes out so that's it apart from a needle and thread or a sewing machine to actually do the stitching so let's talk about lengths uh, Unfortunately, these sort of things come in normally three meter lengths. I think this is three meters, yeah, three meter lengths. Uh, and you will find that most lanyards will take you between 70 and 90 centimeters of material. Uh, so it's a bit irritating because what that generally means is you'll only get three out of a three meter. Uh, one of the other things to, to mention is it's not as cheap as you would think. Uh, if you buy these, uh, I buy these in 50s. Uh, then it works out fairly cheap each and the same with the clips. Uh, if you were to buy them in uh, you know, fives or sixes, then you could find yourself spending 20 pound on, on five of these and five of these, for example, before you've even uh, looked at the, the ribbon prices. Okay, that's the doom gloom a bit really over. Uh, from, from then on, it's a very, very simple process. There's only two things you need to remember on the, the preparation. Uh, one is if you are going to be using double sided uh, a pattern that pattern that's double sided so here's this one is double sided uh, this one is uh, pride room uh, I had to check check there there was yep just the six uh, so this is a, a pride one and you can see that it's printed on both sides which means that when I put it through the clasp hook there you can see that I can get away with just sewing across there because when it goes around the neck like that it will show nicely on both sides however Elsa come here uh, take this frozen one it's printed on one side if I was to do the same with that you can see that I would end up with the print going around one side of my neck and a blank pattern going around the other, which would not look good. Now, rather than have to double up so that I get back two of the both, uh, two of the both? Oh my god, where's my English? I get two both the same. Uh, what I would do is I would cut this, and then when I have two cut, I would then put them through the and I would sew them up at the back, like that. I mean, you could do it like that, but you would have a big lump where the fold is. And so I'd probably just cut them across the back and pop them. So those are the two things you need to remember before you start doing any sewing. Is, is it one-sided? Is it two-sided? If it's two-sided, then I can just leave it like that and sew it. Uh, and if it's one-sided I need to somehow get it cut and the same goes with the the back so if I'm at the back as it comes around the back of the neck it needs to go into the loop like that 
But what I also need to do is ensure that the other side of the loop comes out with this pattern on the same side. Now, what I've done here deliberately is I've done it with the back. So that would not be good because it means that the sort of the uglier side uh, would appear. What I want is this side to be shown. So I would have to make sure that one of them goes in like that and then the other one goes in like that. To be honest, unpicking it and redoing it is not the end of the world. Uh, as I said, sealing uh, is easy enough for this sort of material. Uh, it will burn away any bits, it says, completely melting it because it burns. Right, let's try that again. There we go. Don't hold the flame too close. There we go. Right, now you can see a feel a slight ridge and that will not fray anymore. So uh, that's what I meant by sealing. And well, uh, let's go to the sewing machine and make a lanyard. Okay, I've set up the sewing machine. Uh, a little bit close to the edge. Right, uh, no, you're not imagining. I have cut a two sided uh, one and I'm treating it as if it's a one-sided one. You'll see it by the thing. And the reason for this one is I just want to, I want to make it spread out slightly rather than end sort of parallel. So, pop it into your sewing machine. Get to the end of the material. And uh, let's go. Exactly my best cut, uh, best, best cut, best sew, but not too bad. I can now tie off the two ends and then cut them off. Now I'm going to put the clips on. Even though I don't need to worry about which side it is, I do need to worry that I get both the clips the right way up. Check that that's the right way up. That's the right way up. Pop that in. Slide that one down for a second. Let's do one at a time. Again, to the end of the material. And not my neatest. Uh, to be honest, uh, it's a bit messy because I'm normally I would be right over the top of this because I'm very short sighted. And I'm trying to keep my arms at a distance so that you guys can see clearly what's going on. So I've got to tie it off and cut the ends. But other than that, all ready to be used or sold uh, at the next convention. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and sub subscribe. And uh, if you like this, I will make more of these. And if you've got any questions, please pop them uh, in the comments below.